In today's video, I show how using off-camera flash for your forest macro photos can help you take shots just like these. come back to one of my absolute favorite spots to shoot I'm in the heart of the Queen Elizabeth Forest Park which is a massive well it's a forest park in the middle of the uh, the Trossachs in Scotland and the whole area is stunning it's full of great views and places to walk but a lot of it is still very wild full of old growth trees and a lot of very much untouched undergrowth and I've spent a lot of time exploring these areas before because it's exactly those areas where you can find some really beautiful macro subjects. And that is exactly what I am looking for today. So I've got a few hours in these areas with my R5, my 100mm macro lens, and I'm really hoping that I can find some nice shots. So down here on the ground, we've got these beautiful beds of different mosses, which basically stretch across this entire area that I'm in. So they already look absolutely stunning, but we've also got these really small little mushrooms just starting to grow through. There's loads of these little mushrooms and they do look great. Just peeking out from these beds of green in a really, really beautiful way. But I'm particularly looking for ones that I think Firstly, stand out from that green a little bit more and maybe have slightly more isolated backgrounds, but also ones that are still intact because a couple of them are looking a little raggedy at the edges. And of course, that's natural. It is nature. They will be eaten by various things, but they don't look quite as photogenic. So I'm keen to find one that is intact. And I think I have just spotted one here, which could be a really nice candidate. Now, these things are very, very tiny, maybe just a centimetre high. So is certainly going to be very much at the macro end of my macro lens. I've actually got my R5 on this little mobile tripod at the moment. Well, I say mobile tripod. It's a mobile tripod leg. I've actually got a pretty robust three-legged thing head on it, but it just helps me get even closer to the ground. It's a very delicate little thing, and from this angle, we're just sort of seeing the cap. I think what I want to do is just get my camera even lower. Thankfully, there's a little sort of ditch just sort of on this side. And I think if I sort of wedge my camera in there like that, then I should be able to get a different view on it. I think a little more like this, which I think looks nice. It's not the most inspired shot, to be honest, but it's a nice start, I think. So at the moment I focus right on the very front of that mushroom. And I think it's a nice enough shot just like that, but I am going to zoom in and I'm going to focus a little further back. And I'm going to do the same again. And again on that back edge. So now I can combine those different focus points the front frill of the mushroom and the stem to make sure that it is nice and in focus from front to back. I'm just going to try the same shot again, but this time just putting a pop of light in there. Because I think the, the shot is nice enough by itself, but the mushroom doesn't really stand out. So I've just changed my aperture to 3.2, a 40th, a 40th of a second to still bring in some of that nice ambient light around. And I'm just going to hold the light off to the side I'm going to give it a little pop. And honestly, I think that's just a much nicer photo. Just gives that extra little touch. And this is the scene that I've got set up. We've got loads of close-ups on these mosses and all of these great little water droplets. It's not the most compelling of compositions, I don't think, but obviously because of those water droplets, um, it does look quite interesting. But I've also put my flash just off to one side because I think with a little burst of light coming in, it's going to catch on those um, little droplets and just light them up like tiny little diamonds. So I'm at, uh, I'm actually at 0.3 seconds for my shutter speed, f5.6 for my aperture. And I've manually focused on those droplets. So when I take my shot, 
We get some lovely parts that are nice and out of focus. We get that nice water droplet closest to the camera, which is nice and sharp. We also get those like prismatic reflections in the background, given those nice rainbow colors. That said, I really like this shot with the, um, with the moss going vertically through the frame, dotted all over with those beautiful dew drops. This one, I'm just gonna do natural light. I'm at f2.8 to really maximize uh, or minimize that depth of field rather, and at 25th of the second shutter speed. Taking those glittery moss shots actually just meant fully laying down. <laughs> and so the whole left side of me is absolutely soaking wet, which is probably foolish because I've got nothing to change into. And I've got at least a few more hours filming out here I and mean, then I've got a two hour drive to get back home. So um, yeah, maybe I could have brought a change of clothes. It would have been so easy just to pop a spare pair of trousers in the back of my car. Didn't think things through. But sometimes you've got to suffer to get the shot. But I've been in this spot for quite a while now. So I think what I'm gonna do is pack my bag up, go a little bit further around the forest trail and see if I can find another spot to explore. I was just on my way out of this little spot. I just found another tiny little mushroom down here, surrounded by lovely greenery. I'm gonna have to get my knees. I'm literally kneeling in water now. I don't think this little tripod is gonna get low enough. It's really small, but it's a vibrant orange, so it stands out really nicely against the greens around it. So I definitely think it's worth a shot. We've just got a little burst of sunlight coming through. So I'm actually gonna start off by trying to take this just with natural light. Okay, no, I definitely wanna use, definitely wanna bring in my own light. So we have got some light coming in. It's not that good looking. So I'm just gonna pop this tripod here, balance, my light on top of it and let's try this again but i'm going to go f2.8 250th of a second whoa that's bright okay take the flash right down to its lowest power setting i'll just switch to vertical composition and I think it's a much nicer shot because we've got we've got some great uh, looking foliage both in front and behind of the mushroom and I think with a very very wide open aperture of f2.8 what we get is a really nice shot of it being sort of framed by those different elements. I'm using ambient light only now 20th of a second f2.8 and I'm going to do another one focusing a little further back on the mushroom and then one hopefully focusing on the stalk and if I need to I can combine those into one sharp image but even just as it is I quite like that sides of the pathway getting a lot more wild now. Much more tree coverage, lots of bushes, lots of ferns, lots of moss. A lot of which is basically the same as what I've already been shooting. So I'm trying not to duplicate anything too much for both my own interest and hopefully the interest of the video. But it's essentially the same types of things I'm still keeping my eye out for. Anything that usually catches my eye will be things like color contrast. There'll be a particular vibrant color that stands out against something else, or maybe there is some sort of fungus growth or similar in amongst all of the green that, um, that could work well. But it's also a little bit just, I'll know what I'm looking for when I see it.
Where am I off to? <laughs> well, I have found the most exciting subject, a wet leaf. Now, fine, wet leaves, not an interesting subject by itself, but this one is covered in all kinds of water droplets. I say all kinds, just lots of water droplets. It's only one kind, really, the watery kind. The reason I like it is because all of those droplets have beaded up on top of the leaf. So that gives me an opportunity to take a good shot with my flash. Because if I just take this, just slightly move these stray strands out of the way. If I just took this shot in uh, just using the natural light, f2.8, 200th of a second, it's a perfectly nice shot. Perfectly nice. But I think if I bring my light in, what I'm gonna be able to do is really light up all of those water droplets in a very different way. So let's just pop this on, my trigger. Nicely in focus, light off to the side, pop. Okay, it's a little dark. So what I'm gonna do now is clamp it between my legs and shoot like this which doesn't look ridiculous at all. How dare you? Yeah, but it works well, actually. In fact, you know what, if I bring it down to the knees. So I've been shooting this in natural light and I actually think it does look really nice as natural light. In fact, I do probably prefer it, but do you just want to experiment with using my off-camera flash? But I think with this one, because it's got such a big cap, I think if I light this from above, then all it's going to do is just cast a big shadow down on its stem. So if I just give that a go, for example, now. Yeah, the, the cap is lit very nicely, as is like that little bit of greenery next to it. But everything else sort of underneath that cap has, of course, fallen into shadow. So... I think what I'm going to try and do is do some exposure blending and I'm going to take a shot with the light coming down from above or maybe slightly off to um, the right at a 45 degree angle here and then maybe take another one with the light coming in from the other side. This is going to give that hint of light on the mushroom stem. Hopefully then I can blend those together in post. So I've changed my settings to uh, f14, 160th of a second, ISO 100. And if I just take a shot without the flash, then we've got pretty much a completely black screen. That's good. That's exactly what I want to do because I want to make sure that um, I'm not capturing any of the ambient light. So I know that when I put my flash into the scene and it lights up, I've got complete control over all of the light that's in there. Let's start off, my flash up here. Yeah, I do like that. It's given a lovely direction to it, but it's definitely too dark on this side. So I'm just going to pop down here, this lovely hint of light coming in from the left. It looks beautiful, actually. Yeah, it's looking really nice. I've got a lot of dry grasses in the background, which um, is looking a little messy. Um, I don't want to remove those. Ne I, I never want to pick anything, take anything out of the scene. Um, it's nature, leave it as it is, but maybe I can darken that down in Photoshop later on so that we've got a little bit um, of a nicer scene. But now I've got that shot, I definitely want to try something a little bit more creative with this off-camera flash. So I'm going to pull out my old friend, the water spray bottle. And basically what I want to do is create the effect of lovely rain coming down. It has been raining here, the ground is sodden, the mushroom itself is already wet, but it's not raining right now. And I'd love to try and capture something that brings that uh, suggestion of weather back in. And I've done some of these shots before where you spray the mist and then if you use your off-camera flash, then that light catches all of those droplets and looks absolutely beautiful. So in order to do that, I've moved my light. It's got to come from behind in order to come through, catch on all of those lights and display on your image. So um, I haven't changed anything else. I'm still at f14, 1 60th of a second. And I'm just going to spray some of this mist and try... <laughs> 
straight away. <laughs> Oh wow, yeah, this looks so good. It just lights the scene up. Let's do that. I don't want too much, just want a little bit coming down on it. it looks absolutely stunning. I'm just gonna slightly adjust my focus. I love fern leaves. I just love the shape of them. And I also think that they look really good when they're lit because right now it kind of stands out because of the way that the light, ambient light is hitting these leaves. You might be able to see that they are a little bit brighter. That's what kind of stood out to me. Um, but I think that the way that you can get uh, your flashlight falling across it, particularly if you light it from above, they can look really, really nice. It brings out those textures, brings out that form in a way that just the, the natural light doesn't. So I'll see if I can get a shot here and show you what it is that I'm banging on about. So I've moved my camera into a composition where I've got the sort of central stalk of that fern leaf arcing its way through the scene. Loads of detail on those leaves themselves. Um, I think it looks really nice. If I start out by just taking the shot using the natural light, f2.8, 160th of a second, you know, it's fine. It's fine. It's just a picture of a leaf. But I think if I bring my light out, this isn't going to change the subject. It's still going to just be a picture of a leaf. But, but sometimes by lighting more mundane subjects, they turn from being just mundane shots into something a little bit more interesting, almost a little bit more abstract. So let's give this a go. We'll start out, as always, by increasing our aperture to something like f10. If I just take a test shot without my light, we've got almost a totally black frame, which is perfect. I'm just going to check my focus is where I want it. And now I'm going to just try bringing in the light. I mean, already I think that looks quite nice. Just one dry bit of grass. I'm just going to tuck out of the way. Again, I'm not picking it, just tucking it behind some of these moss leaves. It's going to reduce the power of the flash and then bring it closer to the, to the leaf. I'm going to move the light around a little bit because as I hold it off to one side, it catches the, the, the light catches the leaf in different ways and it allows that shadow to build up um, underneath some of the uh, some of the parts of the leaf, which really helps emphasise its form. So again, it's experimenting, moving that light around in a way that if you had your light on the camera, it's just going to fire forwards. If I just take as an example, hold this flash in front of the camera and fire it straight at the leaf. It's quite flat. It's not that interesting. Not a lot going on. But by allowing you to hold it off to one side, hold it from above perhaps, we get a lot more form, a lot more shadow detail, and it becomes a much more interesting shot. This is not the most exciting of subjects. It is literally just a picture of a leaf. And I'm not suggesting that by bringing the light in, it suddenly transforms it into an award-worthy image, but it definitely makes it a little bit more interesting. And I actually really like it going up on those close details, using the light to emphasize those shadows. Yeah, I think it's quite nice. I could see this being printed in a triptych of three different leaf patterns. Anyway, let's move on. One thing I have noticed about becoming more experienced with off-camera flash and macro is that it starts to open your eyes to more images. You see things um, in a different way because you're not just looking at it as it is under the natural light. You start to actually see shots that would work with flash. You look at textures and think, oh, I know that if I lit it from this way, it would start to look more dramatic. So you kind of see things in two sets of eyes with the natural light and then what a shot could become once you light it up, if that makes sense. Hope it does. And that took me a long time to get there because it is sometimes a fiddly process getting to grips with light. It's very trial and error. There is a fairly sizable learning curve sometimes. But the more experience you get with it, the quicker you can get your shots. And that's when you can start to sort of pre-see your shots. Pre-see. The word I was looking for is visualize. Visualize. 
creasy. <laughs> I need more coffee. Found this lovely ladybird. And with natural light, I think it looks really nice. And again, it's probably one that I might actually prefer with natural light, to be honest. Yeah, it's really nice. But let's just turn our flash on. Increase our aperture. I'm gonna remove my mag sphere. I can just get my light in a little closer without disturbing it. I wasn't really sure I was gonna find much more today, but I've just found this sort of, I don't know what it was. I mean, it's definitely some sort of seed head. It's quite dried up. And if I took this shot with natural light, it's a very, very kind of dark area. And I'd have to use quite a slow shutter speed, something like that. I don't mind it. It's okay. I'm gonna get down a little bit more on the ground. I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Flip out screen to the rescue. You know, I don't dislike it as a natural light shot, but because we've got so much texture from all those dried up seed heads, I think that by bringing in the light, I can really emphasize that. So now I'm gonna take my aperture to F, F14, my flash at its lowest power, bring it in very close. We pop that light. We just get this lovely glancing light coming off it. It's quite minimalist actually, just the way that the light is only sort of very faintly brushing against those things. But as a result, we get some beautiful textures on there. I might need to focus stack it slightly because while the front part of that was in focus, those sort of rear parts were not. So I'm just gonna twist it to there, take the same shot again, and then I can blend those together in post if I want to. I'm gonna take another shot for the, uh, for the stem. But again, I think it really goes to show the power of bringing in that flash and being able to move it around the scene off camera to be able to put it exactly where you want. And in this instance, I've put it coming in from the top and it's giving lovely texture. And again, I think this is probably one of those subjects that you just walk past again and again and you wouldn't really think it would make for a, uh, a good macro shot. And fine, yeah, it isn't super exciting. And again, it's not award worthy, but I definitely think it really transforms into something completely different once you bring that light in. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching this arguably quite rough and ready video. Um, and I really hope that you might have found it useful to see how I go about using off-camera lighting for my macro photos. Um, if this is of interest, then do please let me know. Um, and let me know if you'd like any more details on exactly uh, the settings that I use, the equipment I use, because I am quite happy to do more on this topic if people want it. But if you did enjoy the video, then please hit that like button and do, of course, consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.